The NBA season is less than a week away. It's time that we do a video where we focus in on some futures, including player awards, player props, and team win totals. I'm Steve Seagrave, and I was the number one handicapper at Sports Memo during the 2023 NBA postseason. I have a great special offer to share with you guys towards the end of the video, but for now, if you guys enjoy the content, hit the like button. Subscribe to the Wager Talk channel if you haven't already, and let us know in the comment section what are your favorite NBA futures this year. I'll be checking those comments and responding back to you guys. So I've been researching uh, NBA futures now for a couple weeks, writing articles for Wager Talk news. So what we're going to do here is run through the awards really quickly. Some of these are, are just leans for me at best, and then we'll go through my favorite plays for team win totals and some player props that are at plus money that I'm really confident in. So natural spot to start, MVP. Uh, Luka Doncic obviously is the favorite at plus 370, rightfully so. If I had to pick one guy on the board just blindly without the money uh, attached to it, it would be him. He uh, finished third in the voting last season. He hasn't finished worse than eighth in the past five seasons. I could see this guy... Uh, averaging a triple-double this year. However, not the greatest value at plus 370 on the board. Uh, the one player that really stands out to me is Anthony Edwards at plus 1,200. He shined last season, obviously. Uh, he seems to be the next superstar in the NBA, and I think he's going to see an increased role uh, for scoring this year now that uh, Carl Anthony Towns is off the team. I think the Timberwolves will be fighting for a top three, if not top two seed in the Western Conference. So Edwards will be in the mix, and he would be my guy. Uh, Doncic for the short money, but Edwards, I would lean his way. If you're looking at a nice 12-1 to 1 play on Edwards, it's not bad at all. Uh, next, we'll move on to the sixth man. Malik Monk is the favorite at plus 450. Uh, he finished second in the uh, sixth man award last season. However, not a, not a lot of value in Monk. He's the only player on the board that doesn't have better than like 10 to 1 odds or better. Uh, like I said, sitting at plus 450. I actually do like last year's sixth man, Nas Reed. And I really like uh, Dante DiVincenzo as well. However, my, my, my concern there is that now that they're on the same team, if, if someone gets hurt in the starting lineup, who's gonna, one of these guys is going to become the starter. One of the two, 100% will be. And it's we don't really know exactly what the roles are for these players now that They've added uh, DiVincenzo and Randall to the mix. So the guy that really stands out to me is actually Buddy Heald from the Golden State Warriors at plus 1,400. He's a high-volume shooter. He is not afraid to take shots. He will, lo he will loft up shots. That's 100%. He's lights out from three. He'll be playing behind Curry and Pajimski, uh on the Warriors. Uh, he's got the ability to put up 18, 20 points a night coming off the bench and he's he's kind of like a a little bit of an iron man here he actually managed to play 20 i'm uh, sorry 84 games last season with only 82 games on the schedule between philadelphia he had to play for two teams the pacers and the 76ers uh, i think his volume alone could get him there he's about fifth or sixth on the list odd wise but so my guy for sixth man is buddy healed at plus 1400 looking at the defensive player of the year this is a lean for me at best i mean the consensus defensive player of the year is as uh, a wemby victor Wembanyama, obviously but he's minus 170 so i don't think we're going to give him uh the we're not going to play him for a season-long play at uh, minus 170 however uh he's probably going to win the award he, he's he's a huge favorite to win this thing everyone loves him uh, the guy that sticks out to me for this one is is uh, Bam out of Bayou at plus 1,400. Now, he doesn't put up Wemby stats. He doesn't put up as many blocks as Wembenyama, but he did get his first uh, long overdue. He got his first defensive, his first first defensive all-team award last season. He's got the ability to guard in the front and the backcourt. He's finished in the top five. For defensive player of the year now in each of the last five seasons uh, the heat always seem to play good defense regardless they ranked number five last season in team defense and uh out of bio a big a big part of these awards let's face it and all these plays injuries injuries if guys get hurt 
It uh, throws things out of balance, and Adebayo has managed to play, only miss 13 games or more in one season in his whole career. So he's pretty durable. So I like uh, Adebayo on a lean at plus 1,400. Obviously, this is probably going to be uh, Wemby's award. Uh, next, we'll move on to most improved player. I got two guys here. Again, we got Victor Wembanyama as the favorite at plus 750. However, I don't see why. He's uh, he's just so well-established, already winning the Rookie of the Year last year. I just don't see him winning a uh, most improved player. The two guys that I really like are Scotty Barnes at plus 2,000. So you get 20 to 1 on him. And Jalen Green, I like him almost more than Scotty Barnes. But we'll go over Barnes really quick. He bounced back last season really strong. Uh, after a sophomore slump in the season prior, he basically set career high stats across the board, you know, points per game, rebounds per game, uh, shooting percentages, field goal, and three point percentages. Um, Toronto traded away Pascal Siakam and OG. So obviously, he's like the clear cut guy that they're going to build around here as a cornerstone player. He has all the tools, he plays good defense, he's versatile. He's, he's got size, and I think he's going to put up a lot of stats here as the leader of this Raptors team. So I think Barnes is a good bet at plus uh, plus 2,000. But Jalen Green at plus 3,000, he really made it a big improvement last year with the new head coach at Udoka. He's arguably that was the number one player for the month of March entirely. In 15 games, Put up 27.7 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 4 assists on 49% shooting. I averaged close to 20 points a game last season. I like this Rockets team a lot. I, I think there's, you know, I think that they're going to be a team that actually is able to move. And this it's the Western Conference is just loaded. But I think they're going to be a team that's going to be able to move into the playing tournament. Another key here is um, they added Steven Adams to the Rockets. He's, he's great at setting screens. And uh, when John Morant, when Adams was on the court, Morant shot uh, 36% from three. When he wasn't, he only shot 29%. And that's over the last two seasons. So, like, I could see Adams setting a lot of screens for Green, giving him a lot of open shots. And uh, Barnes just got the bag. He just got a big contract. But actually, Green is on the final year of his rookie contract. So... He's playing for some potential money here. He could be a restricted, he's restricted free agent, going to make some cash. So I like him at plus 3,000 for most improved player. Really quick on coach of the year. I like Udoka. He's the favorite at plus 1,800. Change the culture in Houston. They rank 28th in uh, points allowed the year prior than 14th last year. I like the additions of Steven Adams, Reed Shepard. Uh, as the rookie, I think, like I said, I think that this team does move into a play-in spot. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I, I had some teams who they would bounce. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But I think that they do move like Memphis. I think these two teams move in. Clippers is a team that's probably not going to be in there. I could see one injury biting the Lakers and them not making it either. I'm just drawing a blank on the other team right now. But the other guy I like is Taylor Jenkins from Memphis at plus... 1400 so the last four coaches of the year have had a win percentage of uh, 0.200 or better in the next season and you know from the prior season they were just riddled with injuries the Grizz last season had to play 33 different players most in the league by far obviously they were able to win 51 games the prior year so it's all about making the jump for this coach of the year award and he has the, they're going to move if they move into the playoffs after having such a poor season last year. I also like the addition of um, the rookie Edie. So I, I think that Taylor Jenkins is my guy here. Although I think you could do a split bet and put the, these are my two leans as Adoka and Jenkins for rookie of the year. Very quickly on this one, it's not anything, this isn't anything I would technically actually bet. A lot of these awards aren't. We'll get to some plays that we actually can bet. But rookie of the year is Reed Shepard. Plus 800. Edie is the favorite. Um, Shepard is a sharp shooter. He ranked 14th last season in college on three-point shooting. Uh, 52% from the uh, beyond the arc. He'll, he's probably going to be coming off the bench in Houston. 
which would give him less of a role than some rookies who are going to be automatically starting. However, I think he can really carve out a spot on this team if they make it to the postseason. That would be another feather in his cap, and I think that he could really do some damage from three-point land on this team, and he'll be a nice uh, addition. So just to lean here, Shepard at plus 800. Go over some real some team wins. These are some playable guys. Like, I've actually put this one in as an official play over at Sports Memo. Utah Jazz under 29 and a half wins, minus 120. Ranked dead last in defense last year, allowing 119.6 points per 100 possessions. They faded down the stretch. They actually had a 14 and 5 stretch. Um, at one point in the season, they were on fire. I think it was actually 19 and five. But regardless, they have they faded down the stretch in the last two seasons. Last year, especially, they go five and 25 in their last 30 games. I think their best bet here. That I think they could end up um, tanking, essentially, uh, you know, trading away some of the guys like Clarkston and Sexton, John Collins, to make room for the younger guys to play and give them a better shot at drafting a player like Cooper Flagg. So that's my favorite team win total right now for an under Utah Jazz. Under 29.5 wins, another under Denver Nuggets at 51.5, and and it's mostly about them playing for the postseason. They have cleared their win total in the last eight seasons, but all good things must come to an end. Uh, They lost their best perimeter defender and a really good three-point shooter, in KCP, Caldwell Pope. Uh, Last year, they pushed for a number one seed. They ended up having tired legs down the stretch. Uh, Jamal Murray struggled for the last two months outside of that game winner that he had against the Lakers. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. was kind of like a non-factor in the semifinals. I think this team is going to be playing for the postseason. I don't think they're going to run themselves into the ground during the regular season. Um... I think they're just going to be happy getting, you know, like a top four seed, not pushing for that number one seed like they did. I don't think they're going to make that mistake again with an older team. I, obviously, this core four players, I don't even have to list them off, but obviously they're going to be in the mix for this Western Conference. I just I just think 51 and a half, I just think they fall short of that. So Denver Nuggets under 51 and a half is another team win total I like. And over Minnesota Timberwolves over 52 and a half. They had 56 last season, third biggest improvement in the entire NBA. Great defense, Rudy Gobert, Jaden McDaniels. Uh, They were number one last year in points allowed, opponent shooting percentage allowed. I like the additions of Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo. He's, He's coming out with the Fury against his former team in the preseason. I like the number eight pick. Uh, Dillingham added to the mix. And if Randall doesn't work out, if, if his shoulder injury, he's not able to bounce back from that. He does have a player option, so they would be able to trade him and move on and get something different going down the stretch if need be. Um, I think they could even take a little step back at this number. With 56 wins last year, uh, you know, only, only need 53 to cash this ticket. So T-Wolves over... 52 and a half wins. That's another win total that I really like. I also like overs on uh, the Dallas Mavericks. I think it's 49 and a half. I don't have full write ups on them right now, but uh, Houston Rockets as well. Uh, I think they're 43 and a half. They were 500 last year, 41 and 41. I think both teams go over their win totals uh, in a loaded, absolutely loaded uh, Western Conference. And speaking of that, I also like the Suns to win the Pacific Division, plus 205. Their main competitor is the Sacramento Kings. I think it's going to take them a little time uh, to get used to having DeRozan in the mix. I love the addition of Bootenholzer at um, head coach. I think he's going to really do a good job uh, managing this team. And then Tyus Jones, he's going to limit turnovers, maximize the efficiency of this offense. And I like the Suns at plus 205. They are the favorite to win the Pacific Division. Before we go over the player props, I want to let you know I have an amazing special offer that I'm running over at sportsmemo.com. You can get an NBA season pass for $499. That's $246 off the normal price. Like I said, I was the number one handicapper during the NBA postseason plus 
34 units. We brought in plus 18 units on player props alone. Also, we're up 15 units during the regular season. So it was a great season. Um, and you can check that out at my page. It's my link to the page at Sports Memo is always in the pin comment. And I also have other deals that I'm offering as I'm also in action in MLB, WNBA, NHL is coming up. I've been, I've been waiting, uh, just kind of watching things in the NHL before I start putting in official plays again. But NFL, college football play of the week, we've hit the last three, four of the last five. And I'd encourage you guys to go check that out. So we're going to go over player props to wrap up this video. Uh, these are two of my favorites here. We'll start with Luka Doncic. Over 9.5 assists. And I think you can sprinkle most assists at plus 800. So last year he averaged 9.8 assists per game. So cleared this mark for over 9.5 assists. Like I said, I could see this guy averaging a triple-double this year. Uh, he's now going to be in his second season. Playing with Kyrie Irving, so a little bit more of a comfort level there. Now he's got Thompson on the perimeter. Uh, he gets some insists that way, hitting some three-point shots or just regular shots out of Thompson. And then you got the lob uh, to Derek Lively. So um, he's third, though, on the list for most assists at plus 800. The main play here is his over 9.5 assists at minus 115. Trey Young's the favorite at plus 135. Tyrese Halliburton at plus 175 however i could see young having a little bit less assists i think they're both uh their over-unders at 10.7 so they're heavily favored over luka Doncic in this most assist category this is just a sprinkle but young i think he could be, um take on more of a scoring role without dejounte murray in the mix and then halliburton he's got the health concerns with the uh the hamstring injury so favorite play here Luca over nine and a half assists with a sprinkle on most assists at uh, plus 800. This one I really love. This is a sneaky one. It's Victor Wembanyama to have a 20 plus rebound game any point in the season at plus 140. Now, the one risk here with this one is if he gets hurt. If he plays a single game, you are in action. So if he gets hurt, let's just hope he posts it before anything were to happen to him. So he had 20 rebounds twice last season. 18 rebounds twice in 71 games. Now, the Spurs were conservative with his rookie minutes. He only played 29.7 per game. He only played 36-plus four times, only 40-plus once. And it's not as rare as you would think for a player to record 20 rebounds. 20 different guys did it last year for a total of 42 times. That include, uh, includes Wemby's twice. Sabonis had the most with eight. Uh, uh, Wemby ranked ranked eighth. Wemby ranked eighth in rebounds last season with 10.6 per game, and every eligible player in the top 12 had a 20 plus rebound game. He's going to have a monster season. We talked about him for Defensive Player of the Year, Most Improved Player. I don't think he wins the Most Improved, but he's probably going to win that Defensive Player of the Year award. Um, San Antonio's win totals all the way up to 36 and a half after only winning 22 last year. They'll be in the mix potentially for a play-in spot, but regardless, I see his minutes increasing in his second season, gives him more chances at those boards, and he was able to do it twice last year and come close to other times despite playing limited minutes. So Wemby, 20-plus rebound game. It's under specials over at uh, DK, and that's plus 140. I really like the value on that one. Uh, one of the last things we're going to talk about here is Carl uh, Anthony Towns, all-star selection at plus 190. He managed to have four in a loaded Western Conference across his career. I see him getting more rebounds um, without playing. Now he's not playing on the side of Gobert. He's back to the center position. I see him getting a lot of rebounds, a lot of easy putbacks. And then the Eastern Conference injury concerns. Uh, we've talked about Halliburton already. Paul George is banged up. And uh, Embiid is always a question mark here. I, he, I mean, players like LaMelo Ball are favored ahead of Cat. At plus 190, I think it's worth a sprinkle for him to get an all-star selection and reserves for injuries. Those count towards um, this award. And this is under, uh, it's not an award, it's under player awards on DraftKings, but it's for him to make the all-star game at plus 190. I didn't really do, um, you know, champion and conference champion. I, I, you know, I lean obviously with my Celtics to come out of the East again. I think the Knicks 
76 is a lot of chalk so there's really no reason to go over it however out west i do like minnesota and dallas i i love obviously okc and denver both teams that will be in the mix without a doubt but uh um, the Con western conference finals I, I like dallas minnesota again i like both these teams to return there however those are just leans like I said, my action is in the pinned comment. As always, I have free plays always posted at sportsmemo.com as well as at X at Steve's Book 22. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button on the way out and drop a comment with your favorite NBA future. Good luck this season, guys, and I'll see you soon for some more videos.